Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be not so much a Bible study, more on current events, and it's going to be about testing your DNA. Now, there are several different companies that are on the television advertising to test your DNA. One of them is a company called uh, 23andMe, which means the, uh, you know, 23 pairs of genes and materials uh, in reference to the humans. Now, I wonder why is it that they want to test everybody's DNA? You know, the thing is, there has been, not just in the United States, but overseas, they have, parents have caught or found out that the authorities, if you will, in public schools, elementary schools, have been collecting and DNA from the children. And then when you go in the military, they're now doing DNA testing. They're sampling the DNA and sending it off. Also for the uh, jails. And if you get arrested by the police, they're taking samples. And, you know, it makes me wonder, well, why do they want all this stuff? Well, there were insurance companies are also starting to collect DNA samples and there the thought is that they will want to exclude people with genetic diseases there was a, a musical group called Robin Trower and I really liked back in the 70s and yeah I'm 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 up there in age and his uh, his singer and bass player, when he got to around 30-ish, uh, died. And it wasn't until his one of his children, I don't remember if it was a boy or a girl, got to be about the same age, and they died. And then they did testing and found out it was a genetic defect. Well, that person was able to reproduce, uh, have children, but then when they got to be about 30 or so, they would die. I mean, you know, let's face it. When you get to be about 16, 20 years old, you can have children. So it didn't kill them before they were of child age. But when they got to be about 30, they died. Now, I wonder, why are they doing all this? Of course, the police are saying, well, we want DNA so that we can match them up to other crimes. Mm, okay, that's a plausible explanation, but why are they taking DNA samples from elementary school children? Why? That is the $64,000 question. Now, some people are concerned that the insurance companies are going to base your health insurance rates on genetics. You know, just by when I mentioned, you know, the uh, bass player for Robin Trower. He was a singer and bass player for Robin Trower. You know, he died at 30-something. So are they going to use this against us? I don't know. But there's some other sinister things that I'm thinking about. How about organ donors. Now, before you, uh, well, let me explain. In China, they are decapitating prisoners, cutting off their heads, and then they're using the their organs for transplants. I mean, you know, if you get accused of a crime in China, uh, that's it. I mean, you're gone. You're done. They cut off your head, and it doesn't affect your organs, and they harvest them. You know, there was a company 
that put out a movie, a movie company. It was called Parts, The Clonus Horror, C-L-O-N-U-S, Horror. And the whole thing about this movie was is that they were taking the elite, the 1%, the rich, the politicians, and they were taking DNA sample from them, DNA samples from them, and they were cloning them for body parts. Movie came out in 1979. Now, for those of you that think well, you know, Bob, that's it's just a movie and it, it's kind of far out there. Well, let me let me let you know, know something here. It's been over 20 years since Dolly the Sheep was cloned. Now, if you can clone a sheep, why can't you clone a human? A matter of fact, it says there are eight different, uh, let's see, on... On the website Live Science, L I V E S C I N C E dot com, they have an article Eight Mammals That Have Been Cloned Since Dolly the Sheep. So, pigs, sheep, cats, deer have been cloned, horses have been cloned, dogs have been cloned. Uh, mice have been cloned, wild goats, and gray wolves. Now, if you can clone those kind of animals, why can't you clone people? I mean, and that's what that whole movie was about. It was about how they were cloning people for body parts, for spare parts. You know, you get somebody that's 70 years old and they need a new heart, well, guess what? You just go to the clone and harvest what you need. So why are they testing people's DNA? Well, let me tell you something. When they're looking for somebody that needs a kidney or, you know, a liver or a heart, they use genetic markers to decide whether that person is a possible organ donor for somebody. And I mean that that's let's face it, that's what they use. They use the DNA markers. I mean, they test the people and say, "Well, you know, there's a 7 out of 8 chance part that your kidneys will work in this other person here." Cuz they've had siblings uh, give other siblings a kidney, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, maybe the kidney, you know, people were poisoned or some kind of a disease or uh, accident or what have you. Now, these genetic companies, I don't know how accurate their tests are. There were three blonde girls. I remember watching their, uh, there, they, I think they did a video on YouTube, I think is where I saw it. There was three blonde girls. They were triplets. Okay? Same mother, same father, same eggs, I guess, whatever. I don't know exactly the whole thing. But they were, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed, three girls, all the same. They sent it to at least, all three of their samples independently, to at least two different companies. And they came back. And, you know, one says, well, you know, you're 80% Scandinavian. Another says, oh, well, you're 72% Scandinavian. And another says, you're 65% Scandinavian. I mean, it's the same ones, same girls. So does that, you know, are they, I mean, they look, they look like triplets. I mean, you know, if you went out a date, went on a date with one of them and, and then went on another date with another one of them, you wouldn't know the difference unless their voices were different. I mean, they look alike. So why are they, you know, why are they pushing for all this? Are they, you know, I always look for something, an ulterior motive. I guess I've been 
watching the evil in this world for so long. But, you know, are they looking for uh, possible organ donors for people in the future, for the elite, for the wealthy, for the politicians? You know, are they cataloging it? I don't know. You know, there was a lab in Massachusetts. I don't know if it was Boston or what, but there was a woman. She was the lab supervisor. And the police were sending her um, forensics material to, to be tested to convict people of criminal behavior. And for about 10 years, she had been falsifying the lab results. In other words, if you were pulled over for a DUI, even if you weren't drunk and you submitted a blood sample, she would say, oh, yep, he's over the limit. Wouldn't even bother to test it. Just, yeah, he's over the limit. Or if they say, can you check this genetic material to see if it matches up with the crime scene? Yep, it matches up. She wouldn't even bother to test it. There were, from what I read, 10,000 something people that were convicted of crimes because of her. Obviously, some of them were guilty, but how many were not? And, um, and of course, they're not going to let all those people go. I mean, you know, they said, well, we'll do it on a case-by-case -case basis. So, you know, if you've got money or your family's got money, they can hire an attorney and op reopen the case and file, you know, all the papers. Yeah, maybe we'll let you go, but then again, maybe not. Why do they want your DNA material? Why? What purpose does it serve? I mean, do you really want to know where your family came from? I mean, is it really that important? And why are they testing elementary school kids? Obviously, they've never been in a crime. Uh, why are they testing them? Why are they cataloging their DNA? Is it future body parts for the elite? I don't know. Now, I'm a Christian, and I've been watching the government, governments, all of them, lie to us since the, uh, since the 60s. I mean, I grew up during the Vietnam era. I mean, I've seen the government lie to us so many different times that... I just have a very, very healthy skepticism. I mean, seriously, when you see a politician's lips moving, you know they're lying. And that goes uh, past, present, and future uh, elections and politicians. So what can I tell you? But why? Why are they testing elementary school children? Are they testing them? For future body parts? I don't know. You know, I don't know why they're testing them. All I know is I don't I don't think I would want to have them do this to my children. And the thing is, they weren't telling the, ch uh, the parents that they were uh, taking the children's DNA. I mean, parents found out by accident. So who's behind this? What's the purpose? I mean, I don't know. That's the problem. There's been allegations that the Israelis have been using the Palestinians for uh, body parts. But the thing is, uh, you can't, you can't, that, that country is so closed, uh, unless you're an Israeli, um, you know, the... Uh, Palestinians have been uh, saying this, and, you know, there's wealthy people. Uh, wealthy people seem to be able to get um, body parts. One of the Rockefellers, I think he had four, four heart transplants. You know, <laughs> and there's people out there that have been on waiting lists for years and years and years, and they can't find nothing. But if you're super wealthy... Uh, they always seem to come up with um, transplants for you. So this is not that far-fetched. I really don't think so. Now, another thing I think they're going to, they're, uh, one of the possible things they're going to use the DNA for 
maybe they're going to try to find out who are God's chosen people. Huh. I know that sounds kind of strange, but uh, I don't know. In Russia today, and I tell you what, Russia today, yeah, I know it's a Russian government news source controlled by them, but you know what? Sometimes they have articles about news in the United States that is only in the local news for the area of the United States, but is totally ignored by the national news. And in Vermont, uh, that's Bernie Sanders' state, they were they did a poll, for example, asking five-year-olds, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, fifth graders, not five-year-olds, fifth graders, elementary kids, fifth graders, okay, what um, about their sexual experiences and whether they identify as male or female. Fifth graders? I mean, really? Sexual experiences? When I was in fifth grade, girls had cooties. Oh, yeah, girls had definitely had cooties. I, I didn't want nothing to do with girls. Of course, that changed later, but, uh, you know, fifth graders? Really? Nothing. Nothing in the news. The parents were appalled to find this out. I mean, they didn't ask the parents' permission. They just had, held it at school. And then a couple of the kids went home and blabbed it to their parents. And then when the parents started investigating, they were like, what the? What's going on here? You know? And the thing is, it's probably in the local paper up in Vermont where it happened. But did I see anything in the national news in America? No, nothing. Russia Today had an article, though. All right, so Russia Today has another article. It's entitled, It's Frighteningly Easy to Track Someone Down Via DNA, Scientist Reveals. And it's an Israeli firm tracking the DNA. Why? Like I keep saying, why do they want to know our DNA. What's up with that? I mean, you know, there are so many Europeans that have had their DNA indexed that there's what they're saying is that if you've got DNA from both sides of the family and there's a kid out there and doesn't know for had amnesia or something, you can uh, test his DNA and find out who his family is by running it through the uh, computer. But why are they doing this? Now, the thing is, my opinion is they're trying to find out, are you part of God's family? Now, I know there's the churches out there teach that, well, you know, all you got to do is believe and you're part of God's family. Well, is that true? Well, the thing is, is you got to ignore the book of Genesis for that to work. Now let's take a look. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 17. Because we're going to take a look at something. All right, we are going to go, boy, we could read this whole chapter. I guess we will. We're going to read Genesis 17 real quick. I guess verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Okay, what's a covenant? It's, it's basically a promise. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Okay, the Christians, Jews, and Muslims all claim Abraham to be the father of their religion. Now, God promised that Abram 
would be the father of many nations. Does one little Jewish nation in the Middle East fulfill this promise? Where are, if the Jews are God's chosen people, and they're from Abraham, and, and they're the chosen people, where are the many Jewish nations? Uh, one is not many. If I tell you I'm going to pay you with many, many, many uh, diamonds, and I give you one, you're going to call me a liar. One Jewish nation is not many. So, I mean, let's face it. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and will make nations of thee. Nations, plural. And kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed, children, my, and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. Generations. Do you know G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O-N-S, generations? The first four letters of that is gene. That's where they get genes, gene from. Generations, genes. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed, children, after thee. Um, let's go down to, all right, let's go down to verse 19. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. Now, Abraham went in under Hagar, the Egyptian woman, his, or her, uh, his wife Sarah's handmaid. And she had a son called Ishmael. But God says, And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation." Now, the Arabs claim that they are the children of Ishmael, and I believe many of them are. I mean, let's face it, 12 princes, they're going to make him a great nation. Do you know there's hundreds of millions of Arabs? So this would be a fulfillment of that prophecy, if you ask me. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he begat, and I will make him a great nation. But, here's the but, and we're not talking about a goat. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, not Ishmael, Isaac. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. God didn't make his covenant with Ishmael. God made his covenant with Isaac. All right, so Abraham had two children, two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. God made his covenant with Isaac, not Ishmael. Ishmael is almost, almost out of the picture at this point. God said he would bless him and multiply him and make a great nation of him, but his covenant was not with Ishmael. You ever wonder why the Arabs seem to be deaf to the gospel? Well, maybe this is the reason. I don't know. And then Isaac um, had two children. One was called Jacob. The other was called Esau. 
So let's take a look in Genesis 32. Uh, let's see. Let's go to verse 28. Jacob meets the Lord. And he said, who said? God. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. So God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. All right, so guess what? Jacob Israel had 12 sons. Now, Jacob and Esau were brothers. Okay? Esau and Jacob were brothers. Did God make his covenant with Esau? No, absolutely not. All right, so there's a bunch of blacks running around that call themselves, uh, they, they claim to be Israel. I call them the black Hebrews, so-called. And they claim that white people are Esau. Um, you know, but the thing is, yeah, Esau was white, but, you know, uh, and they'll even admit that. Esau was white. But the thing is, is if, if Esau and Jacob were both brothers and Esau was white, wouldn't Jacob be white also? But you can't talk to a black about that. They just don't listen. And you will never meet a more hateful group of people than that. I mean, they absolutely cannot wait to exterminate the whites who they call Esau. All right, so let's take a look at what God has to say about Esau, who was Jacob, Israel's brother. Malachi, chapter 1. All right, let's take a look. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. See, God loved Jacob. Verse 3, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Now, what's a man's heritage? His children, people. God's going to lay his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. All right. Oh, uh, let's go to Psalms 127, verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So when they talk about Esau's heritage, they're talking about his children, people. Now, in Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. We read the following. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. Uh, Joseph is one of the uh, tribes of Jacob Israel. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. What is stubble? Stubble is something that you use to burn. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. You see, God loved Jacob, but he hated Esau. Even though they had the same father, same mother, God rejected Esau. Now, if you think God doesn't have a chosen people, let me get you to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Are you living in holiness? I hope so. Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, 
who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know that how, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Esau was rejected. Who rejected him? God rejected him. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears, crocodile tears. See, Esau would have inherited the blessing, but God rejected him. God didn't make his covenant with Ishmael. God didn't make his covenant with Esau. It was Abraham through Isaac through Jacob. Now, there's people today that'll tell you, well, you know, Jacob Israel, that's, that's the Jews over in the Middle East. Well, maybe, maybe not. Just because somebody tells you that doesn't mean it's true, does it? I mean, uh, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at uh, the book of 1 John chapter 2. We're going to look up the Bible definition of an antichrist. 1 John chapter 2. If you don't know where 1 John is, it's toward the very, very end of the Bible. It's uh, near the book of Revelation, uh, just a few pages before. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. So who's a liar? Anybody that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So if you deny that Jesus is the Christ, you're denying not only the Son, but you're denying the Father that sent the Son. Now who fits this definition of being an Antichrist? Jews. Call up any synagogue, any synagogue, and ask them, is Jesus the Christ? And they'll say, nope, because if they thought that Jesus was the Christ, they would be Christians. They would follow him. So let me ask you a question. How is it that churches teach that the Antichrists are God's chosen people? How? How does that work? Really? You're going to tell me that those that deny Jesus are God's chosen people, but the Christians that believe in Jesus are just Gentiles grafted into this Jewish tree? Really? I Personally, I believe Christians are God's chosen people. And I don't think the Antichrists are. I'm sorry. And then they tell me that I'm, I'm in heresy. Uh, really? Really? So, if I don't believe that the Antichrist are God's chosen people, I'm, I'm a heretic. So, maybe, maybe they're taking these DNA samples because they want to find out who genetically are from Jacob Israel, who are God's chosen people. You know, Abraham was to be the father of many nations, and one Jewish nation in the Middle East does not mean many. All right, turn your Bible to John chapter, the book of John, that's one of the Gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, John, the book of John chapter 10, we'll start in verse 23. Now, this is from the King James Bible, which I suggest. All right, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. All right, so Jesus was walking in the temple. Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews. Who? The Jews. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him. All right, so here it is. The Jews are surrounding Jesus, and they're talking to him. And they're, this is what they asked him. 
How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Did you catch that? Jesus said, But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. Do you hear God's voice? Do you hear the voice of the words of the great shepherd, Jesus? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So, if I believe that Christians who hear the voice of Christ are God's chosen people, and I think the Antichrists are not, does that make me a heretic? Well, it does if you're going to a mainstream demon nominational building that's a business, a 501c3 tax-exempt business that's masquerading as a church. Uh, it's a business with basically the, the name church in it. I mean, they'll tell you that's a heresy. But God promised Abraham he'd be the father of many nations. Where's all these Jewish nations? I mean, let's face it. When you look up all the promises that God made to Israel in the Old Testament, there's only one group of people that fulfill all those promises. Now, the black Hebrews, so-called, will say, well, you know, in Deuteronomy, whatever it is, 32 or whatever, we, we were slaves. Well, guess what? Every race of people has been slaves. Have you ever heard of being Shanghai? It was a city in China where they would knock you on the head knock you out, and then you'd wake up on a ship out in sea. And then basically, if you didn't want to get thrown overboard, you'd do whatever the captain told you to do. Well, to be shanghai was to be kidnapped, be made a slave on a ship. Every race has been a slave at one time or another. Every. But if you look at all the blessings that God promised Israel, there's only one race of people that fulfills them all. And that's the Europeans, the white Europeans. Now, I know that's a, a, a heresy to most people that go to church and consider themselves Christians, but, you know, if you want to believe the Antichrist or God's chosen people, that's fine. But um, I think the Christians are. So why do they want this DNA testing? Do they want to find out who are God's chosen people? Is that what they're doing? I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. And if you want to know what Jesus looked like, look in Revelation chapter 1. There's a description of Jesus in Revelation chapter 1. And you know what's interesting is if you look in the Jewish encyclopedia, it says that Esau, remember Esau, the guy that God hated, that he said he was going to destroy his heritage? It says, uh, the Jewish encyclopedia says that Esau is in modern Jewry. I mean, King Herod, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian, said that King Herod, you know, the guy that tried to kill Jesus and, and all the children in Bethlehem, uh, they said that he was an Edomite uh, an, of Esau. So, I don't know. But uh, the Jewish Encyclopedia says that Esau is in modern Jewry today. My sheep hear my voice, but ye are not of my sheep. Hmm. So why are they doing all this DNA testing? Are, do they want body parts? Forced organ donation, or do they want to know who the God's chosen people are? You know, I've heard them talk about, oh, well, you know, the Jews have got the Cohen 
gene. Well, how do they know that? Did they go back uh, 3,500 years and take a DNA sample from uh, Levi, the tribe of Levi? Uh, I don't think so. And besides, when you got an Israeli firm that is doing the DNA testing, are they going to, you know, a basically an anti-Christ company, are they really going to tell you the truth? You know, and there's several companies that are doing this. Um, so, I don't know, people. There, All I know is there's a bunch of DNA companies out there and why the government's wanting to collect all this uh, information, I don't know. It's probably a variety of reasons, but maybe they want to know who the true children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are. I don't know. But, um, you know, just something to think about. You know, uh, what can I tell you? Keep an eye on your children. Um, and, oh, by the way, Georgia, um, I don't know if it, they passed it into law, but they were wanting to do executions by guillotine. And because um, let's face it, uh, cut the head off of a prisoner and make his organs available for donation. China's doing it. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a few uh, countries that do that. So, and uh, in the end times, um, believers are going to be beheaded for their faith in Christ if you believe the book of Revelation. What can I tell you? So, all right, well, like I said, this was more of a warning than a Bible study. Uh, I have migrated to real.video. That's www.real, R-E-A-L, dot video, V-I-D-E-O. And um, I'm not abandoning YouTube, but I'm anticipating for the day when YouTube boots me off. So if you are interested, I have over 600 and something studies on real.video. And that's where I'm going to um, have my main channel on. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, the great shepherd who was... Uh, sacrifice who is to be as the sacrificial lamb before the foundation of the world in Jesus precious name amen